Namaste. Welcome to Agriculture Affairs in Nepal with me, Nirmala Basnet. Dear viewers, let us now start the program with the main affairs of the day. The Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock Development has launched a national campaign for farmer listing system. There has been a demand to declare Chapa as a T-zone. A five-point agreement has been reached between the Wadi community of Karnali and the state government. Plus more. Let us continue the program with the formal listing initiation. The Nepali farmers have been complaining about not getting the subsidy made available by the government. The government sees the need to list the farmers so that the subsidy is properly used. This system will be implemented throughout the country according to the news we are receiving here at the news desk. Nepali government now should also look at the working conditions of the farmers and improve the working conditions. New research should be done to make the workload light in the mountains of Nepal. The Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock Development has launched a national campaign for farmer listing system. Let us now look at this news report for a little while. The Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock Development has launched a national campaign of farmer listing system. The objective is to identify the real farmers and integrate them with the services and development plans available from the state by consolidating the information and details of the farmers. The ministry has claimed that the campaign will identify the real farmers. Inaugurating the campaign, Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli said that it was the beginning of an important step to make farmers self-reliant in agriculture. The Prime Minister said that the problem faced by the farmers would be solved by bringing the issue of agriculture in one place. He also stressed on the need for vocational agriculture training. Speaking on the occasion, Minister for Agriculture and Livestock Development Padma Kumari Aryal said that the government has launched this campaign for the prosperity of the farmers by identifying the real farmers, stating that she was happy to add the slogan of Prosperous Nepal, Happy Nepal to the farmer listing system. She said that the program would play an important role in moving the community forward. <laughs> धेरै खालका किसान आन्दोलन भयो त्यसको प्रत्यक्ष अप्रत्यक्ष सहभागी हामी पनि बन्ने खालको वातावरण बन्यो र किसानहरुको हकीकतको निम्ति किसानहरुको अधिकारको निम्ति किसानहरुको संरक्षणको निम्ति विभिन्न खालका आन्दोलन गर्दै अभियानहरु सञ्चालन गर्दै हामी अगाडि बढ्दै गर्दा तिनै किसानको हकीकत the ministry has stated that the program run by the government at the same level for the development of agriculture will reach the real farmers and will facilitate the implementation of farmer-centric plans and help in conducting integrated agriculture development programs. To apply for the farmer listing, one has to go to the website prepared by the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock Development for the campaign. After the news report, let us now talk about Sample Vegetable Village in Dailik. There are different programs in the country on agriculture through Nepali government. The Nepali people are slowly realizing that going abroad to work can be replaced by agribusiness at home. A lot of the youths do not want to be far from their home and family. 
They want to work in Nepal, yet due to lack of proper market for the agriculture produced and lack of properly functioning programs from the government, the youths go to foreign employment. The Nepali government should solve this kind of problem so that the youths in the country are satisfied with the earning in Nepal. The sample village program might encourage the youths to stay at home. The Komalakara municipality of Dailek is to be made a model vegetable village. Let us now look at this news report for a little while. Kumala Khad municipality of Dai Lake is to be made a model vegetable village. With the financial help of Artbish municipality, the European Union and DCA Nepal and the facilitation of Sosek, the village is being made into model village for vegetables. To make a sample village, the farmers have to improve the sheds to keep animals and the front yards should be cleaned and there should be ditch for disposal of waste matter. According to Vashanta Sreshta, Deputy Executive Director of the Social Service Center, six cash crops including tomatoes, cauliflower, potato and peanuts will be given priority as per commercial vegetable farming and price chain. In order to prevent any problem in vegetable cultivation, Sosik has also decided to deploy two agriculture technicians. The European Union and DCA Nepal have already invested around 9 lakhs to make the model village. After the news report, let us now talk about tea zone in Chapa. Elam is known as the capital of Nepali tea. Now, just south of Elam is going to be called tea zone. The concerned bodies have demanded that Chapa be declared as tea zone. Tea has been cultivated commercially in Nepal for 150 years. Nepali tea is mostly exported to India. Tea brings in foreign currency in Nepal. It gives employment to many people in the garden. The tea zone will be declared to play important role in providing minimum wage for the laborers. Many youths go to foreign employment every year. With new programs in the country, we could keep the skilled workforce at home. There has been a demand to declare Tsapa as a tea zone. Let us now look at this news report for a little while. There has been a demand to declare Chapa as a tea zone. A program organized by the Regional Office of the National Tea and Coffee Development Board in Chapa has demanded the declaration of a tea zone to promote the cash crop. The district coordinating committee has stated that by declaring Chapa as a zone or super zone like paddy, maize, betel nut and rubber, it will be in the interest of tea farmers, workers and industrialists and will help in quality production. Urging the board to play an important role in enforcing the minimum wage set by the government, the tea farmers said that the creation of tea zone would be in the interest and protection of farmers, laborers, and industrialists. However, Prem Acharya, acting head of the regional office in Chapa, said that there was a problem in understanding and assisting the farmers due to lack of resources in the office. The purpose of the board, work duties, statistics of tea in the district, and current year's budget were informed in the program. After the news report, let us now talk about sugarcane farmers. The sugarcane farmers have been demanding payment for their sugarcane since last January. This January, a farmer lost his life due to the harsh condition under which he was protesting. After that, there was news that the sugar mills were paying up the dues. However, it is surprising that sugarcane farmers have still not been paid in full amount. There is no transparency of the payment made. The farmers are demanding the full details of the payment made. Lack of transparency could bring loss to both the farmers and the government. The sugarcane farmers are preparing to hand over a memorandum to Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli. Let us now look at this news report for a little while. Sugarcane farmers are preparing to hand over a memorandum to Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli. The Struggle Committee, Sharlai, is preparing to hand over a memorandum to Prime Minister Oli saying that it has not received all the payments. Rakesh Mishra, who will start the Kathmandu-centric movement by handing over a memorandum to the Prime Minister, informed Krishi Television about their plans. Even now, sugarcane farmers have not received all the payments. 
the government has so far given 600 million to the farmers and 50 million to the ministry. However, it is not clear how much the farmers have been paid and how much money is left with the government. The farmers have also demanded that the details of payment be made public by the sugar industry. After the news report, let us now talk about paddy transplanting machine. The use of high-tech in agriculture of Nepal is long overdue. The Nepali leaders have been promising all sorts of things. Yet the people have been working like donkeys forever, even in the easy-going flat land in the south. The mini tillers are available, but the person who uses has to walk along with the tiller. Where is the easy riding seat? What the modern world is about is lighter workload due to development of high tech. We want to work more with comfort and ease. Why should Nepali people keep on working in primitive methods? The mountains need taming. For this, we need to do more research for high tech that can be used in the terrestrial fields. The Prime Minister's Agriculture Modernization Project, Project Management Unit, Chiton has successfully tested four-wheeled paddy sewing machine. Let us now look at this news report for a little while. The Prime Minister's Agriculture Modernization Project, Project Management Unit, Chiton, has successfully tested four-wheeled paddy sewing machine. Paddy was planted in four plots of land in Chiton as a test to see if the machine was working properly. Agriculture scientist Madhav Baudil informed that the test was successful. In the first week of Jait, small farmers are preparing to plant paddy in 25 bigas of land in Chiton for the first time. Sewing paddy from the machine will be quick and accessible. There will be requirement of less seed, less fertilizer, less cost, and time will be saved. It is said that 10 to 15 katas of land can be sown with paddy per hour depending on the nature of the land. After the news report, let us now take a small commercial break. Stay with Krishi Television. After the commercial break, welcome back to Agriculture Affairs in Nepal. Dear viewers, let us now talk about Wadi community. Nepal houses many different languages, cultures, ethnic groups, and communities. Due to uh, cultures and beliefs, many communities have not been able to move forward. One of such communities is Wadi community. The Nepali government has many programs to educate the people, but not enough to reach many communities around the country. There are programs to motivate agriculture in the country, but not enough to manage food security. The Wadi community had been protesting. It was demanding for land ownership from the state government. Now, the state government intends to provide the demand of land ownership. A five-point agreement has been reached between the Wadi community of Karnali, which has been agitating for land for the past two weeks, and the state government. Let us now look at this news report for a little while. A five-point agreement has been reached between the Wadi community of Karnali, which has been agitating for land for the past two weeks, and the state government. With the agreement with the state government, the agitation of the Wadi community, which has been protesting near the office of the chief minister and the council of ministers since Fagun 10, has come to an end. It is mentioned that the state government will request the federal government for land as per the agreement reached between the Secretary of the Ministry of Land Management, Agriculture and Cooperative Rajendra Mishra and the coordinator of the Wadi Struggle Committee, Hikmat Wadi, on Wednesday. Similarly, the state government will form a three-member task force to submit a realistic report within two months for the upliftment and development of the Wadi community in Karnali. Similarly, it has been agreed to conduct additional programs for the Wadi community in the current fiscal year under the Clothing, Food and Roofing Program under the Chief Minister's Office. It is mentioned in the agreement that the issues of income generation will be included. All the programs of the movement run by the Wadi community will be withdrawn and interest subsidy will be provided to the young entrepreneurs of the Wadi community by setting up vocational training and revolving fund. 
After the news report, let us now talk about Hat Bazaar in Thankuta. Hat Bazaars are like the farmer's market in the West. These markets take place in a fixed place where the farmers come to sell their products. They take place once a week in some places and in some cases take place twice a week. These markets are very useful in providing proper place where necessary household items can be purchased. Besides, going to the market is very fun and recreational. It is the time the children get to see life apart from school during the normal times when there is no war against Corona. Farmers are happy that the Bakrivash municipality of Thankuta has brought easy marketing of agriculture produce into operation. Let us now look at this news report for a little while. Farmers are happy that the Bakrivash municipality of Thankuta has brought easy marketing of agriculture products into operation. The market, which operates every Saturday, houses green vegetables, fresh fruits, cereals and other items produced by the farmers. Both sides are happy that the farmers can sell their produce directly in the market and the buyers can also buy it from the same place. Harkabahadur Basnit of Bakrivash Municipality Ward No. 4 has been collecting milk, broom and ginger for the past 10 years. According to him, broom is easier to cultivate than other crops. Therefore, he suggests farmers to plant cardamom and broom without cultivating the land with other crops. The market has been brought into operation by the Pakrivas municipality with the objective of facilitating the sale of agriculture produce, vegetables and fruits produced by local farmers. The farmers are happy after the operation of the market. Nirmala Rai has been selling soybean, lentils and juniorly maize in the market. Her family is making a living from this small business. Consumers are able to buy clean, hygienic and cheap vegetables in the market while traders are also getting the fair price. <laughs> Farmers have been producing seasonal and non-seasonal vegetables in Pakribas, which is a fertile ground for agriculture production in the district. Oranges, ginger, cardamom and soybeans are produced well here. Farmers have been producing vegetables using organic manure instead of urea fertilizer as cows and buffaloes are reared at home. Fulmaya Kotwal, who goes to the market to sell heads of mustard greens, sells 1,000 worth mustard greens a week. With the opening of the Hat Bazaar, the situation of having to go from house to house to sell goods has come to an end. Ram Bahadur Bika has been making sickles, kukuri and hoe for the last 20 years. Until the market came into operation, Bika used to go from house to house to sell goods. The bazaar has been brought into operation for the convenience of the consumers as the business centers including Bakrivash Bazaar are closed on Saturday. 
Even on Saturday, consumers have been able to go to the market and buy the goods they need. The market houses fresh fruits, grains, and essential household items produced by local farmers. After the news report, let us now talk about outbreak of armyworm in corn. Last year, we had a major problem in corn due to armyworm. This spring is no different. The armyworm has been infested in the corn fields. This is causing worry in the farming community. Loss for the farmers means loss for the country. The Nepali government should be more careful to advise the farmers with proper technology to combat these worms. These worms are believed to have been originated from the Caribbean. They have been causing problems in agriculture in the USA and Africa. Since last year, these worms have been damaging the Nepali crops to the extent of loss. An outbreak of American army worm has been seen in maize planted in Chiton district. Let us now look at this news report for a little while. An outbreak of American army worm has been seen in maize planted in Chiton district. Outbreaks of army worms have been reported in maize planted in Ratnanagar municipality, Kairiheni municipality and Bharatpur metropolitan city. According to the Agriculture Knowledge Center of Bharatpur, an outbreak of army insects has been observed in the spring maize planted in the district. Currently, there is an outbreak of army insects in maize planted in an area of 50 bigas of land. This insect attacks when the maize plant has about four to five leaves. Experts suggest that the farmers should pay special attention to maize cultivation as it can digest the pesticide which was first seen in Nepal in 2019 AD. Experts suggest spraying the pesticide only after 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. as advised by the technicians which would be the best for the army insects. After the news report, let us now talk about Kole Sag. Kole Sag is a local name for a leafy vegetable that grows in a lot of water. The word Kole comes from the word Kola, which means the stream or the river. In the land that is not easy to cultivate, this vegetable is growing in commercial amount. The farmers are reaping the benefits of easy growing Kole Sag. The land which did not produce much grains is now cultivated with Kole Sag. The Nepali government has to study closely at the land that is available to us and utilize it. With the unorganized urbanization, the fertile land around the country is used for settlement. While the land that is not easy to cultivate is left alone. We need major awareness programs to make the people realize that most of our land is mountains which cannot be cultivated. We have to save the flat fertile land for agriculture. However, this next report is quite admirable. The production of kohle greens is better than paddy in the fields. Let us now look at this news report for a little while. It is difficult to plow the field by the oxen. even. If you plant paddy with grief, the cost of not producing is more and production is very low. But now there is a good income from Kolesag. Some landowners have planted their own land while others have rented land to cultivate vegetables. Vishnu Kimire of Putali Bajar Municipality 1 has been planting vegetables by renting a field for 5 to 7 years. The oxen cannot be yoked. The tractors doesn't go. The land that is planted with paddy with difficulty only to get husk is now being cultivated with kole greens. Many women like Vishnu Kimide have earned thousands of rupees from the greens. Together with Anita Gurung, she has planted greens in five rupees of land and pays 40,000 rupees annually as rent. In August, the field is dug and the stems with the roots of the greens are planted and can be harvested within a month of planting. Greens are produced from September to April. Since the field needs to be filled with water, it is called Kole Shag. According to Vishnu Kimide, it is about one arm long, has green leaves and white stalks. Since it is not possible to sell one or two bundles, they have given contracts to the traders coming from Pokhara to do wholesale trade.
Together, they have been reaching Bukhara and Butwal. It is also sold from the farm at 50 rupees per bundle. Dhan Kumari Ali, who came to Sangja from Pokhara to buy vegetables, says they take 50 to 60 bundles of greens daily. They take it to Pokhara. And once the people eat the greens, they look for the same greens again. There's no problem of market. <laughs> Kulisag brought by a woman from Tarai to Sangja a few years ago to visit relatives has now become a business for many. Everyone started cultivating the same greens after they started to grow from the stems after eating the leaves. Today, most of the fields in Sangja are planted with kolisag. With less labor and income, women in particular have a better source of income. Unused farmlands have been put to good use. This is all in Agriculture Affairs in Nepal with Minermala Basnet. Before I go, let us review the main affairs of the day. The Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock Development has launched a national campaign for farmer listing system. There has been a demand to declare Chapa as a T-zone. A five-point agreement has been reached between the Wadi community of Karnali and the state government. Thank you for watching Agriculture Affairs in Nepal with Minermala Basnet. I'll be back with more affairs next time. Till then, Jai Krishi, Jai Kishan, Samrita Krishi, Nepal Kushan.